Okay, so I think uh, we're getting there. It start to be almost time to, to render. So um, I just want to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. I just have a few, few details. And um, I'll, I'll get back later on this scene, on the uh, storytelling aspect of this scene and the different elements I've been I've been uh, crafting in this image uh, the opposition of apparent peace uh, of some elements and the violence of some others. This is uh, yeah something I, I really enjoy in uh, in my uh, personal illustrations. It's really this balance of uh, of contradictions and trying to to create the potential for a story without telling everything because i think it's far more interesting for the viewer to try to make his own story based on the, the elements he has rather than trying to to force a story uh, on my side so this is something i i often try to achieve in my images which is really to um, yeah, create that potential for storytelling. And uh, yeah, about this umbrella, which by nature an umbrella is something. Uh, I think, I think that I connect an umbrella to something quite peaceful in general. And uh, yeah, the uh, I think it helps to create this. This, this uh, balance, this opposition between the apparent peace of the setting. Same for the boat. I, I really want to uh, make this boat look quite uh, reassuring. I mean, I'm going to add some, uh, some a few, a few other elements on this boat just later. So right now I just want to make sure that these elements here, I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I want them to have a... <laughs> yeah, I'm going, to, I'm going to make a group with this and now I think I have to go one by one to make them flow in the sense of the action. So this are mainly, I think, these ones here. These are really small details, but uh, I think it it helps a bit to give a sense of uh, of action, a direction, in, more directionality. I, I, I believe in the uh, in these elements.
just trying to exaggerate a bit the movement. Sorry for the noise. boat. So I just want to fix first this plank here. I'm trying to guess where is the bottom plank to, to mask it somewhere here. Okay. And now I want to have it under this character fit. The, the, one of the reasons I really love the, uh, the Bruges Gizmo, even though a lot of people hate it, it's, it's this, I mean, you can, you can decide of any, any direction, force, force this uh, gizmo to be uh, exactly um, perpendicular to the angle of view by holding shift, right? And now I can I can move in another direction and if I pick the middle handle and I'm holding shift, I can move in any camera view, I can move in this exact direction. So I think it's, uh, it's really, really cool. For, for, for complex scenes like that, sometimes it's, it's a nightmare to position things in space and uh, using world coordinates or object coordinates, I use uh, as uh, it's usual to do in, uh, in other 3D package could, could be quite, uh, quite, quite difficult or time consuming more. Or maybe it's just me, I'm just used to this gizmo. So. I want to take care of this part of the boat. Just make it less prominent, I guess. Because I, I really want this to be a really peaceful, uh, small, small embarkation, something you usually take to simply go out and. Uh, have a nice uh, time on the lack on something like that. You know, take your umbrella because you don't want your be beautiful skin to be hurt by the sun if you have a, a bright complexion. And you go on this nice boat. Maybe I have to uh, because this boat is decimated quite a lot. So maybe I have to remesh boat before doing anything else. So let's try this backup before anything. Dynamesh. Oh, yeah, sure. Should have expected that to happen. So let's see. I will need first to um, do a panel loop because it's it's only one face. So Dynamesh will try to to close the this mesh. So I'm going to use panel loop. Remove the polish feature. 
and inflate it inward. Okay, so now I believe that I can dynamish the whole thing. Yeah. So now the question is how much details am I losing by doing this? I want to dynamish a bit with a bit of higher definition. And uh, yeah, another issue I, I believe with, with Dynamesh is that you, you can't stop the process once it's launched. And sometimes if uh, when I'm working with this complex scenes with a, a lot of scale uh, variation, uh, what happens sometimes is that uh, I'm launching a Dynamesh at the wrong scale. And so even uh, a D4 Dynamesh or even 64 density is going to represent a huge, huge density for the actual uh, mesh, and uh, and ZBrush is going to freeze, uh, freeze, and ultimately either crash or or I have to uh, to uh, kill the process because it's going to take forever. So yeah, Dynamesh uh, is really, really cool feature, but for this complex scenes, uh, it's it's quite. Uh, quite important to make sure that you have the proper scale before launching the algorithm. And I'm not too worried about this, uh, these planks because they, they won't be seen that much in the final scene. So now, sorry for the barking, it's, it's quite hot right now. And uh, it's maybe maybe it's like 32, 35 with outdoor. So my windows they, my windows are open. I'm basically trying to make a mask, but it's a bit difficult. So I'm going to use my mask by curve brush because it might, it might be easier. Let's see if I'm taking a, rest, a curving point here. Yeah, that's better. Woohoo! I don't know what happened. Okay, it's a bit better. So, I'm trying to figure out the the design at the same time and what I want. So, I think I want I want to create a simple ridge. On the outside, because right now the the plank I suggested uh, doesn't make a lot of sense to have on about planks that are coming coming on the outside of this main uh, ridge. So I just want this ridge to be a bit wider. And uh, maybe I should. I should uh, re-sculpt about from scratch. But uh, I, I like, I really like to mess around with um, with my meshes because uh, as, I, as I stated uh, already, I think it really helps to get uh, a more organic feel rather than having like very clean uh, geometry. direction okay I'm getting there and now 
yeah, cool. The Dynamesh kept the uh, polygroup, so he's going to make my life easier. Okay. So, I'm going to create a group for this. Control W, select on me that group, and um, ah, it's going to be really, really, really tough to get what I want. But let's try. Let's try to split and if I, if I'm screwing up I, I, I'll get this boat back from a, a previous uh, version I should have I should have made, made a backup before but maybe I can do one right now let's duplicate this one okay so I have the duplicate which is here and right now I'm going to go back in time to where I was before so I think here it's okay. Okay. So let's take this one. Okay. Perfect. I'm going to split, split, uh, split hidden. Take this part here and I will try to dynamesh to see if uh, I can close these holes and have something. Uh, more easier to work with. And yeah, right now it takes forever, as I stated. Maybe I crashed the whole scene. It's possible. Um, I'm going to pause the recording and get back to you when it's done. So, yes, the brush crashed and and actually I'm thankful that it crashed because I just realized that I've been totally screwing up with something super important about this boat. And it's funny because I lived for some part of my childhood on a boat. So I should knew better than, than putting the plank in the wrong di direction because actually the plank are never in this direction on a boat, they are in the opposite direction. And I think I'm going to sculpt a boat from scratch because, um, yeah, this one sucks completely. So let's, let's make a boat. Um, to work with some symmetry first. Transform, activate symmetry. Where is the axis? Here. Here's my x axis. So let's create base shape for the boat. Want to keep this in the center. Okay. To delete, modify typology, delete hidden. Okay. So now, um, I think I'm going to work only with one side to achieve the effect I want. So let's see in my references. I grabbed a couple of red. So, the first thing I want to do, I will centrally delay it by symmetry. I'm really sorry for this bug, this dog outside barking. Can't do anything about it. 
apart uh, killing that dog, but I love dogs, so I won't do it. Uh, yeah, that's a feature I, I really don't use a fan, I know it exists. Yeah, delayed by symmetry, okay. So, um, I want to... get more boot like shape maybe by doing this now I'm going to slice cut the brush slice rectangle okay so this slice brush it it's really cutting polygons so it's, it's great for for creating like very clean seams Let's delete hidden. I want to get that as close as I can from the sea border, maybe mirror and weld. Okay. Um, let's see now, what trick can I use? I could maybe do this, let's try. I'm going to try to make a panel loop. Wider panel loop. And I'm going to happen. Thing is that it really destroyed my geometry, so not happy with this. Unless I can fix it with some uh, polish by feature. Okay, so streak is to create a separate group here. Control W. And now, if I'm polishing by feature, I should have yeah, hard edges. Inflate a bit, polish by feature. that one and I will try with my brush clip curl to clip to clip that one in the center And if you are a, a solid ZBrush modeler, you, you might become crazy see, seeing me doing this like that because there is probably a simpler way to do it. I'm sorry to make you endure this if this is the case. If this is the case. Okay, I'm going to select um, now the top shell here. OK, 
Okay. Geometry delayed by delayed hidden. Okay. And solo. Okay. Split that one. Clean it in that direction. Moving it up a bit and split it. Split hidden. Okay. in here same cut it and same for this one So I promised I would really share with you all my uh, my inner messing around. So this is what I do most of the time, which is I absolutely don't know what I'm doing. And I, I'm spending my time to try to figure out little creative problems and having fun along the way because yeah, it's it's a boat, but. I enjoy figuring out the shape and uh, how, it going, how it's going to to work, and also trying to ignore ignore as much as possible the uh, the useless challenges because there are there are challenges that are really not worth uh, spending too much time on them. Like here. Um, yeah, I need to do something about this, which is too wide. So, how am I going to do this? I think uh, I could create an outer ring just to make a selection, because right now it's, it would be um, maybe I can, I can do this with the uh, the modeler brush. Let's see. Let's see if I can select only the single poly I want to select a poly loop, and I want to create a poly group. Can I do this poly connection? Yeah, poly group solo. Let's see. Probably not the proper selection. Yeah. I want to do this for the poly loop. Okay. Yeah, cool. That works. So let's select only this outer ring here and here. Okay. It should be good. So I'm to select only that one. The hidden. And now I need to clean things a bit because this um, clipped geometry in here might be an issue. Yeah, we'll see. 
it's probably going to be an issue. I, I just want to see what it does with an, a panel loop. Solo. Okay, shift F. Oh, why not? Why not? Let's try to um, clean this with the. No. Not good. No, it's, tr it's attractive, but it doesn't work. So let's do something cleaner. First of all, I think I'm going to remove the bottom part is going to be problematic. Okay. Geometry, modify topology, del hidden. Okay, let's create a panel loop again. Panel loop, maybe in the other direction and with less of the thickness. Better like that. Okay. I might not need to add detail in the background, so let's see. Okay, so I'm going to create some polygroups. Polygroup here. We have some polygroup in the center, but what I would need though is to merge these two sides here. And I can do this like that. Okay. Now I'm going to use this mirror and weld. Okay, I have in hidden. Yeah, hidden geometry. So first I'm cleaning that hidden and mirror and weld. Okay, so now thanks to the mirror and weld feature, I now have a, a perfectly clean geometry and yeah, perfectly clean. It's, it might be a lot to say, but let's try to do some polishing. Especially in that part, in that part of the boat. Not happy at all with this one either. Same here, let mirror and weld. Okay, let's look at the ref. Because 
I'm going to see the inside of the boat a little bit. So I'm going to bring some higher density details in here. To be able to extract some more interesting uh, elements and just to make my life easier, let's try to mask. No, it's going to be, take too long. I'm going to use it by hand. It doesn't have to be perfect anyway, so it's not. And this uh, geometry in the center is going to be an issue, so I'm going to duplicate this. Come back to this one. Delete hidden. The lower the hidden. And now I really need to remove this center piece of geometry, so I'm going to isolate this part. Remove it again, dead hidden, and uh, now I want to do panel loop. Just a bit of polish, not very beautiful. Panel loop, solo, same. So I'm going to create polygroups at each border to keep uh, a nice square termination. So now, because I have different polygroups at the top, top and at the bottom, I should get, I believe, a better result. Maybe it's not, it's not clean enough. Deformation, polish by feature. Yeah, it avoid to have this uh, very rounded termination. Right. Okay. Now I want to add two planks, two seats, because there is one where the character is going to stand and another one to suggest a place for to use the paddles and a bottom seat. One plank, one seat here, and another one in the foreground here. And now I want to create this nice curve. So I'm going to extract this time with a tool. Extract. Extract. 
subtract. Okay, no. Um, it doesn't give me the proper orientation. So, what can I do? I will keep the double and reduce the thickness. And now I'm going to clip this geometry uh, right towards the bottom. Okay, first attempt. So now I know how to do it. I'm going to delete that one because that's not what I want. Getting back to my selection and now I want to remove the top part. Yeah, like that. Just to have the proper intersection. So I'm going to do it again. Extract, accept, take that one. Keep it downward and moving it up. And now, just when it's going to cross the surface of the shell, I know it's it's a proper um, positioning. Okay, and now I'm just going to add. A bit of thickness and so it doesn't work. Let's see. And not a, there is always a way to do it. So I'm going to use another technique. Here. I am going to quickly try to inflate it. And to clean it. So here I really want to make some polygroups on each side so it won't create a curve at each corner. Ctrl W and now I should be able to polish by feature and clean. Seems a bit Brush, mask, circle. Same here, just going quickly regroup for the value here. And I'm going to inflate everything just a little bit more. So when I'm doing a polish by feature, I can maintain a proper, if possible, overall size. Okay. Clip. 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 
clip again Okay. So I need to widen this one just a little bit. No, it was okay actually. Maybe it's the opposite. Wow, all these to sculpt three planks. I must enjoy doing things the painful way, I think. Sometimes I could be more efficient. But anyway, I have my basic boat and now I will try to Let's see. I think I, I will bring it in the scene. Brush select pen. No, brush mask pen. I hope you don't mind the music. It's uh, the orig original soundtrack of um, if you didn't recognize it from uh, Black Mirror, this uh, Netflix series, which I think is uh, absolutely awesome. So as I mentioned, I'm using this feature of the gizmo to 
to move my um, my elements in the proper direction. Now that I have set my my axis, which is aligned to the to the world default axis, I can pretty much go in any direction and uh, just use this this uh, this little handles to decide in which axe I want to do my modification and all chief to constrain the uh, transformation to this to this axis. Okay, I'm having fun with modeling right now because I'm, I'm explaining things. Honestly, if I weren't uh, trying to explain my, my uh, process in ZBrush, I think I, I would have probably cut a, a lot more corners. So let's quickly create a pattern. To append the yeah, cylinder. groups one group another group here for the review and uh, I'm going to clip with polygroup now to make sure I'm getting this on the side I want to create a few other groups here I need to activate this. Uh, one group, okay. Another group, another, another one here. Okay, and maybe one at the bottom. Okay, so now if I'm subdividing it, I have I would have a simple simple time to just doing it this way. I'm honestly having fun right now, <coughs> as I said, with modeling, so 
none of this is, uh, is totally necessary for the purpose of the illustration. anything in the deformation palette back up. Okay. lower so I can uh, extrude. And once I have everything in place, I will start to add some more chaos to the positioning of these paddles so, so they don't look uh, that symmetrical. And I need a quick, quick piece. Extract, accept, clip, clip. Okay, just to suggest a bit the shape, that's all. Now, I'm going to save this boat. Save as. Boat. And I'm going to. Set tools. Merge visible. It's going to merge everything into a single subtool that I can import now or even create okay, display frequency. Right. I'm going to quickly create an insert brush, create insert mesh. Auto. Okay, so now I can I'm going to go back to my main scene. Here. And simply insert. That boot. Here. Which which has kind of similar proportions. I 
I'm just selecting pieces of geometry here so I can use my shortcut Ctrl Shift A to expand towards geometry and now I can set to split hidden to isolate this specific part I just inserted. So Let's see. Ah, uh, I know what doesn't work on this boat. Forgot something. can see once again I lost I lost my um, my materials but hopefully I can resign them quite easily. I have my Caribbean water and now I can pick my other material. Just explore no value 50%. I think Keyshot just crashed. Uh, in fact, this is something with this combination of software that happened to me quite often is when I, I'm having my computer to go into sleep mode uh, and then I'm, I'm reopening the same software that were just uh, sleeping. Uh, after a while I have, I have crashes. So I think this is what happened right now with, with Keyshot, it just crashed. But anyway, there's my boats, and I think now what I want to try is to get a little curve on this boat. I'm going to isolate the elements I need. the original one is going to be I think easier. So I need to use first I need to I need to stop the key shot process. So because it's eating all of my no not even key shots. Let's keep key shots.
Anyway, it's okay. I don't know what the hell is happening, guys. What is happening? Okay. Let's see, it's okay. So, Zipper in, Trunk Post Master, T Post Push. Okay, I just want to test if the T posing is okay. Okay, perfect. So let's do it. Let's do it again. Double. So I want to Add a bit of a curl to this boat. So I need to try to do this with deformation planets. You see a uh, spirit. Ah yeah, it's what it is, the gravity. Okay, nice. Cool. So again, set tool. Merge visible. Should be that one. Okay. Let's create another insert mesh. Push. Create insert mesh. Hey, remo remove my mask because this is what happened the last time. Create insert mesh. So now the last one should be the good one. My C. <coughs> Here. And I just need to insert this bolt like here. And I will split the basket points. Not perfect, but let's see how it works with the current composition. Yeah, I think this curve is, is really nicer. I, I really love what this slight curve to the boat is bringing. It's definitely more interesting, I think.
And I need to bring some more imbalance to this boat. Like it, it's really moving, not only because of the character being in front of it, but also because of the fish. So something like that. And I'm, I'm trying to think about this, the rocks I added in the background and how they, they were uh, um, interacting with the silhouettes of this boat, this dimension about avoiding tangents and so on. And like right now there is a graphical node with, the, um, with this part of the boat here, which is interacting too closely with this border here, so I'm just going to scale this boat up just a bit. And maybe I'm going to rotate it on this axis. So I want to rotate it yeah. tiny tiny bit. And I fix I, I fix the uh, position of the character. And now this new curve, which is created here, I think it interacts in a new way with the composition. And I, I don't feel that this sweeping curve that goes up right now uh, really works for me. I would rather have this bottom of the curve to be uh, aligned with the frame. So I'm going to try to uh, just mess around. Uh, in this in this uh, alignment so right now I, I'm only moving uh, on the Z axis I'm only rotating on the, on the Z axis just to try to get that curve of the boat to work for me yeah I think it's I think it's better and uh, maybe I can also cheat a bit with perspective by increasing the lens about I think what I miss is what I had to begin with, with the other board, which is this protuberant part, yeah. But 
and it's, it's super strange what is happening. So. Let's see. Maybe I can isolate <coughs> this part of geometry. Okay, so I want to try to have this piece of geometry to work for me and create a little error, a little compositional error to point the eye back towards the fish. Right now it's it's dirty but it's just to see how it works. Just a bit more. So I'm I'm extruding by holding Ctrl Shift just to avoid to distort too much the actual geometry. Not there yet. It's not what I want yet. I think I want some things that point. Because right now the this arrow points to the child and I think I want it to be aligned in this action line. So this is what I will try to match. Maybe I won't, I won't manage to have it on the hook. I think it's better. Because I try to keep in mind that this is going to be a silhouette, a stronger silhouette than what we have right now, because right now our values are all light and shadows, and they are all working in this in the same contrast ratio, so it's difficult to read the silhouettes, but I know that after a while, after a while I have a stronger both silhouette in here and I, I really want I really want this to participate in this in this strong action line. So I, I will come back later on all the action lines that I, I actually see in this image. And unconsciously this is something now I realize I, I'm not necessarily conscious all the time about these section lines but they are here and once I will start to, to paint I will emphasize them so we will have like this strong diagonal hair that goes through the feet through the the boy hairs that goes through this foot here and and it's all it's all unconscious but most of the times when I really slightly move things around and I feel they don't fit the composition at some level without realizing real, uh, we, uh, sorry, without notif uh, noticing it I know I'm trying to align all this element with these strong uh, structural lines so sometimes there are curves like here, here like this this curve, the hand of the boy that align to the curve and we go back to this element here there is like this diagonal here that goes through the feet of the boy and through the eye of the of the toe. So maybe right now I feel this toe that has a bit of a hard time to align. So ideally I would get this eye just slightly down in the composition to to emphasize this uh, this line here, top of the head, of the character more or less the hand here. So these are all landmarks that I want. And, and I, I know uh, most of the time when I'm coming back to my composition, I realize these elements are aligned, but I, I rarely try to consciously build these lines 
on my own. I, I, I'm not going through and crossing lines and say, okay, this is going to to be the strong action line and I want this to align with it. It, it happened unconsciously, visually. I try to organize things and uh, they, they end up being organized with strong action lines. Like for example, I notice in here that this uh, almost straight line, it goes just towards the the uh, end, the tail of the fish, and this it starts right here to the to the corner of the of the frame, creates this strong line up to here, and there is another one that is going up through the jaw. This value here. So yeah, this is, this is very, very compositional and I will talk again about it. Same thing here. This fits align with the rod here. Another strong here line. That goes down. And I, 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 I feel these lines when I'm, I'm trying to position my elements. Uh, I, I don't realize that they are here, but things start to organize and it's like magnets elements that start to attract visually some part and I try to mess around and really make these elements feel organized and most of the time they feel organized when they start to be aligned to these strong magnetic structural lines elements. So I hope it makes sense and when I'll be in Photoshop hopefully uh, I will emphasize all of these uh, structural elements and I, I will talk more about it. So I just want to fix the last couple of very very small things and I want this fit to really slide softly to make a contact with this plant because I want to feel that the, I want to communicate the, the idea that this character is is somehow magical or it, it obviously doesn't belong to to our normal world and uh, so yeah the bark I want the the boat to to be constrained to uh, to, to the law of physics so because he is moving his child with with strength so the bark is going to to be submitted to the to the force to the weight of the character but the character himself. I don't want him to feel like he's submitted to the same law. So he, I want him to feel like he's almost floating above uh, this bark, this uh, boat, sorry. And uh, yeah, I know bark is not the correct word in English. Uh, yeah, so this is the idea. I want, it, I want him to feel extremely lightweight and uh, nothing is really difficult for him. He can, he can move all these different uh, elements around him and he's grabbing the umbrella to take his, um, his balance, but it doesn't really matter, he could, he could do without it. I'm just making the contact point and I move the, uh, this piece of geometry a bit upward. And uh, yeah, this is the moment where I'm asking myself if there is any other major element I need to correct or to fix or to detail in 3D. Because right now I'm almost ready to, uh, to do my render passes. And I think, yeah, I just put something I needed to fix two things actually. So I think there is. This uh, element here. I want to make it uh, work. With the composition, as I said before. So let's try to change the orientation a bit.
Okay, so I managed to get back to where I was just before the crash. And uh, yeah, I think right now I have pretty much everything I need for this. So I'm probably going to run there right now.